Hi, you are again with Volleyball Explained podcast. As you can see, we are not two people like the last time. We are three. Uh, me, Bogdan, Nicola from Pirole di Volley, and our friend Ronnie from Cuban Spike, our friend uh, who was also our guest in First Tempo podcast uh, some time ago. Uh, so Volleyball Explained podcast is not going to be just Volleyball Explained podcast uh, from uh, this moment on, but a co-production between Volleyball Explained, Cuban Spike and Pilole Di Volley. As the, the page of Nicola, uh, uh, I should uh, excuse myself because I, I didn't mention that during uh, the last podcast, the first episode about the Italian Championship, uh, about this uh, beautiful uh, statistic, mostly page of, of Nicola. But if you like uh, volleyball statistic, you surely should uh, uh, visit and subscribe, follow the page in Facebook. Uh, and in Twitter, Nicole, in Twitter also yeah, it was in Twitter. Especially yeah, in Twitter. Uh, so, so we are going, uh, we are going to to put all the all the links for the three pages uh, in the description, so so people can can follow uh, each of them. Um, as we promised the last time, today we are going to have a look in three topics: the Super Cup of Italy won by Perugia, uh, the first round in the or the preliminary round in the Cup of Italy and in the in the first round of the Italian league. So guys, what's your opinion? Perugia won against Lube 3-2 in the final. And before that, uh, it was a very even clash between Trentino and Lube. And uh, also Perugia a little bit easier, but still uh, won against Modena. Yeah. Do you want to start, Nicola? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, as you said, we had a pretty entertaining uh, Super Cup. Uh, which I, I still call it Final Four, despite the two, two like the semifinal. And yeah, Lube Trento was a little bit more even than uh, Modena and Perugia. And this showed that pretty much everything we stated out last, last time. I mean, Trento is getting closer to, to Lube. Uh, but with this, the same defects uh, we already pointed out, the reception, um, uh, especially uh, when it comes down to meeting uh, such a strong team and serving as uh, as Lube. Lube wasn't that consistent, but they were more focused and more resolute uh, on the the key point during the the two leg uh, the two leg round. Uh, if I I can find out the silver line inside of uh, of the the semi final is that Trento, who played without uh, Lucarelli and uh, Lisinac for both round, uh, started uh, Alessandro Micheletto, 19 year old uh, spiker, two meters and and five, who proved uh, he could stand the ground against a powerhouse uh, like uh, like Lube. And the other semi final, uh, it wasn't that. That close and Perugia easily won the the first leg, and maybe for the first time uh, we saw how much of a leader can Leon be uh, in this team because uh, Perugia played with a new setter, played uh, without Atanasiewicz, uh, played without the how can I say the, the old superstar they had last year, uh, Podrashan, uh, for example, and Leon really carried the, the team. Uh, uh, especially in the round, the second leg they played in uh, Modena. While Modena had... Uh, Karlicek tried to keep Modena in uh, in the game, especially in the second round. Uh, Modena played without Vettori, so Karlicek played as the opposite. Petric and Stankovic helped him a little bit uh, in the game in Modena, but they, they went down pretty badly, in my opinion, in the two sets that they lost. And uh, in the second round, uh, Modena at the end won 3-2, but it was a useless tiebreak because after the fourth set, Perugia was already qualified uh, for the final. Well, I think uh, you should... Uh, uh, well, for, first of all, I will congratulate Perugia because uh, they proved that uh, even, when, even when only one superstar like Leon they, they could beat an uh, experienced team like uh, Lube Civitanova and Leon performance it was out of the world. I was commenting that on my podcast, Cuban Spike, 
that uh, his performance was uh, beyond uh, was legendary to me because the, he scored more points than the three Cubans of Lube combined. So that's the the, the weapons of, of, of Lube and he if he can match uh, or match them, uh, Lube is done because I uh, we all know Srilishki is a young opposite. He's not uh, Sokolov. And he, I think he, he is in, in, in big shoes for, his, for, for that type of player he is. I think uh, Lube needs uh, to find another opposite or uh, keep trying uh, to develop more release kit through the years because uh, was uh, was a, a little bit down at the end of the match. And well, well. Uh, you, you you guys could see the the match on on right and uh, was spectacular by by Leon. Talking about the semifinals, yes, uh, I think Trento without Lucarelli and Lisinac, especially on the middle, uh, was a little bit weak, but not so weak I I could expect because that first match uh, three two. Uh, with with Nimir uh, schooling Juan Torrena, uh, especially on recession, that we all know that Juan Torrena uh, among the Cubans is the best one <laughs> in passing. So uh, in the second match uh, was a little bit uh, uh, easy for for Lube because they were on on home soil. But still, uh, I think for me uh, after the first round we will later comment on that. Uh, Trentino is the is the best team sh in shape right now, uh, men for for men. Uh, Juan Torrena for me is uh, in uh, declining right now. He's 35 years old, and we all know the problems that Leal have through the years with passing. And well, Simon, if not is not that dominant man who 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 ruled the war in 2010 when he got silver. In Italy, World Championship. So uh, yes, uh, Trento just a little bit, and Lube second. Uh, but yes, I think without Leon, Perugia will not have a chance against uh, Lube. And if them, if they uh, rely on Leon every time they met Lube or Trento, I think Perugia will have a lot of problems through the season especially in Champions League because they have a big pack schedule and well this is this will be hard uh, because of the COVID the season will end in, in April no, not in May uh, so there will be a lot of games and it will be fast endurance uh, season I guess. Uh, Bogdan? Firstly we should know that uh, Perugia can get even better because Atanasievich didn't play in both matches uh, against yeah. uh, against Lube in the final and against um, Modena. Uh, talking about uh, Trento and Lube the semi-final I believe that you you exhausted the topic uh, uh, quite enough about Modena I believe that they are going to have very big problems as I mentioned also in the first podcast I believe that they are going to going to be out of the top four uh i don't i'm not a i'm not a fan of petrich honestly as a player i don't think he's uh, quite good enough to be to be a top four in italy uh uh imp most important uh, outside hitter or receiver uh lavia is talented but uh unexperienced and uh luca vettori is uh was injured, so he's he's not playing uh, almost uh, uh, so far, and uh, they try Karlicek, Karlicek, which is uh, strange. I mean, he he's a very good outside hitter. He's not the uh, no opposite. So this is a uh, this is a decision which is uh, which will be very uh, temporary. And uh, I don't believe that they can fix that. Yes, they have Grebenikov to, to receive, but Grebenikov uh, can can do something, anything alone. Um, uh, about the final, firstly, honestly, I'm surprised that uh, that Perugia won without Atanasievich. 
Uh, from from the other perspective, uh, as, as Oni mentioned, Rechlitschke is not that not that good. He's not on that level, even though I believe he's playing much better than he played in the beginning of the last season. Uh, but I believe the most important point in this match was that both teams were serving quite good and receiving decently. And the most important points were on a high ball and Perugia due to the game of Le- uh, Leon most of the time uh, were better in that and in scoring after a high ball. So so that, that was the, deci- the most decisive part, uh, I believe, of this match. Still, when when the end result is tiebreak 16-14, I don't believe we can draw very huge consequences from that because it's one just one point. So, uh, so, yeah. so this is it. And, uh, and uh, again, uh, for me, what it was very impressive that Perugia won against uh, Lube in the final without Atanasiewicz. May I ask? I uh, just want to add the the final was the classic roller coaster between the two teams. The Luber starting strong the first set, then uh, trailing two uh, one, then getting the fourth, and the tie break. Um, the two teams were pretty much exhausted. I don't know if you watched the the, the game live, but one trainer couldn't basically jump uh, uh, anymore, and the sets were slower. And then um, there was a turning point when the two teams were twelve. 12-12, it was a long rally won by Perugia, who probably turned the momentum completely of uh, of the tie break and led to the final to the final four points with Sole a first tempo and then a block. I think they they finished the the game out. But in the first set, the two teams were attacking Lube 70% and Perugia 68%. So it was pretty entertaining at the beginning, very slow. At the at the end of, of the game, as you should expect, at such an early stage in in the season. What do you think about the, that last uh, serve of Terhorst? Uh, I think maybe some people can say he he stepped on the line, and uh, there was no video check by by Lube. And well, uh, early in that in that set. Uh, Perugia either have video checks and the uh, referee ask to uh, in, taking in, in his responsibility to to see if the if the call were were correct. I think uh, Cormio uh, talk about uh, that after the the game and uh, well, it's normal to complain when you lose, but uh, I think. Uh, a uh, ref could could check that that the last uh, serve on their horse. I think is my opinion. I don't know, mm-hmm. guys. You you have uh, some different opinions. In 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 uh, situations like that, even even if I believe that even if the the teams do not have any any challenges left, the the, the referee should take the initiative uh, in, in all cases. Especially if he's done it before during the game. Um, so, actually, watching it live, I thought that Terror's to step on the line. Then there are some, because of course it spread a big controversy in the day after <laughs> here in Italy. So, we had a lot of frame try to figure out if they stepped on, on the line or not. Uh, but it's quite difficult to figure it out when a player is wearing white shirt and uh, the definition. Uh, of the of the zoom is not that good that you can distinguish the line from the from the shoe of the player. Um, so even after that, uh, the frames that were circulating in, in, on the web and throughout the fan bases here in Italy, it's difficult to tell if it's step on the line. But I agree with Ronnie and you. I think that the referee should have should have called the the video check, consider that he has done it before. Another controversial situation. If can I, if I can make a comparison, uh, in some of the tennis Facebook pages, there are sometimes photos of uh, of the marks of the ball, and and they are asking if it is in or out. And if you, if you see the comments after that, it, they are maybe 50-50. So so sometimes yeah. there there is not a there is not a right right uh, correct decision or call anything. 
it's it's a judgment it's it's almost a judgment call even even though it is an objective situation it's a judgment call i agree yeah maybe we can go to the cup where our uh, failure of predictions from the first uh from not the that first, we're fault actually uh, yeah yeah of course <laughs> but yeah yeah we we can uh what, what what do you have predicted we predicted that milano verona Piacenza, Piacenza and and, uh, and top volley, yeah, top volley. It is Cisterna will, will play in the in the quarterfinals, and only only Milano qualified. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> Piacenza lost all their three games. Uh, Cisterna won only one, I believe, or if I'm mistaken, not sure. Uh, just to check it because I'm the. Uh, yeah, I think they yeah. win. With, yeah, uh, over... yeah, they, they won. They won. Uh, they won only against uh, uh, only against uh, Piacenza. Piacenza. Yes, yes. So, uh, Verona lost all their three games, and uh, and I believe that Monza is the is the the nicest surprise by now. I, I mean, I mean, we are going to to talk later about uh, them beating. Modena is a guest, uh, 3-1, but uh, I believe that now uh, uh, also with, with the transfer of Filippo Lanza, they're going to be much better with, with Lagomgia, who is very talented, and, uh, and Maxwell Holt, and, and this Marco Sedlacek guy who, who it's not very, uh, I'm not very familiar with him, but uh, his stats against Modena were also very good. And what do you think about Piacenza? Why, why they failed so drastically in the in, in the cup? Well, uh, if you look at the at the stats for each of the three games they've played uh, in the in the cup round, their attacking were below the forty two percent. Basically, they can develop a game that was fit uh, that fitted well to the two outside speak, uh, outside uh, hitters, uh, Cleveno and. And Russell and they they couldn't be able to connect as they hopefully they they, sh they should have uh, they should have done and when there was uh, a little bit of turmoil uh, at the end of the second of the second game when they basically knew they were out of the of the of the of the competition I think that the the third game wasn't really um uh, something you, you can look at to, to figure out uh, what happened, and I think that the last set uh, of the of the third game, uh, Russell was playing opposite uh, uh, Antonov and Voto, who are the two uh, outside uh, hitters. So uh, the last of the three games is not something you you should uh, should analyze. For the first two, um, it was uh, sometimes painful to watch because uh, uh, either the choices of uh, Hirasuelo. Of, or uh, the outcome of the play by the the spikers, both Grozer and the two outside spikers, were way below the level that those players uh, get get used to to show while playing volleyball. Actually, maybe maybe Rony can say some words about Irozuelo, who is a Cuban and uh, well, and I is would... the playmaker of yeah. Piacenza. Um, I will see only. Uh, I, I will say only this, Jerezuelo uh, come to Italy uh, a month ago, a month and a half ago, and he was out of shape, he was a little bit fat and overweight, let's say overweight is, very, is more nice, and uh, <laughs> let's see for, for a moment the, the career of, uh, of uh, Grocer in the, in the last years. Uh, he he was playing uh, in Korea, in China, uh, and uh, in Qatar. Then he went to to Russia and and, and spent I think three years. To, uh, uh, sorry, two two years I think. And he's a man that that have now thirty five years old. So he he never played in Italy, which is a completely different volleyball uh, from Russia or. Asia, because in Asia you know what you for for you play, uh, you are playing for money, and uh, I think he he will take time to to adapt to this new reality, 
because uh, Italy has proven to the world that it's not only about uh, br uh, brute force, it's about technique, it's about uh, uh, the, that soft touch, you know, that, that many players uh, like, uh, I, I don't know, for mentioning Juros Kovacevic or, or other players that play so technical, uh, like Luca Aurelio, uh, exactly. Uh, that is Italian volleyball, you know, it's not only about uh, spiking hard like Lyon or Leal and uh, in, the, in the first round match against Ravenna, uh, they, they, they took revenge, uh, but Grosser make a lot of, of silly mistakes, like uh, touching the net, uh, spiking hard and, 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 and out, so yes, Gerresuelo is not in great shape right now, uh, but uh, either Russell who, who was in quarantine in, in the back in the USA and, uh, and and grocer and for me those two pieces uh, those three pieces are are the uh, column of this uh, team of Piacenza I hope that with Bernardi uh, they can improve uh, a little bit but also I know that Bernardi didn't like Gerresuelo when he was in halfback when Juan Torrena and Kaczynski play there and uh, now I don't know how we'll manage that relationship that is not so good um, but yeah uh, I think uh, Slati make a great job joining all these stars together it's like a second version of Lube with all an experienced player I think Nicola mentioned that and on, on his uh, Facebook page below the Divoli that Piacenza are the oldest team in the Superliga this year. So yep. yeah, uh, yeah, a lot of stars, a lot of name, but they can play as a group. Let's see what happened in the in the next round of Superliga. I can't talk about Ravenna and Padova, and they they qualified for the for the quarterfinals, but I can say some. F few things about Verona because yeah like we said the last time they are the Bulgarian team in the in the Italian league um, my perspective is that Verona's problems come from derived from the reception why firstly the libero Federico Bonami is not that great to cover even for example half court against the float surf it's 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 a bit a bit it's a bit hard for him uh then uh, when kaziski and tasparukov play uh, matei can't concentrate more on his attack surf etc and should concentrate more in reception than he, than he's he, he was used to before uh, because of asparukov who is not that experienced of course he's uh, only 20 years of age and I believe that was the biggest weakness of, of, of uh, Verona in the, in the cup. In the league match against Lube, even, even though they, they lost 3-0, Jeske placed instead of Asparukov. And in, that, in this regard, they were much better in, in reception because Jeske could, uh, could cover more space, could, uh, could receive more, and that actually releases... Uh, Matej Kaziski uh, in order to uh, to be to be more concentrated in attack, especially in attack. Uh, that was also a problem uh, years ago when when Matej still played in the in the Bulgarian uh, national national team. Uh, and the and the other positions, I don't believe they they have that big problems. Bouye is a great opposite. But this reception problem is in the middle of them being better in the next in the next matches. Yeah, uh, will be a long season uh, for uh, Verona too, especially of that uh, in that aspect you mentioned. The reception is a key part in the in the in the world of volleyball right now. I was hearing to one of the master class of Anastasi when he said that uh, volleyball comes and part from the reception and then you can set, you can attack, you can do everything you want. But if you don't have a team that uh, with good passers, like, uh, I don't know, uh, 
who, who, who for you is the is the good uh, receiver of size Piker right now in the Italian league? Uh, Coy, uh, maybe the Lanza. I don't know, but uh, the Juan Torrena, Juan Torrena. No. Maybe maybe <laughs> with the maybe with the with the exception of of uh, of, of him aging. I believe he's the best receiver. Well, uh, I think this season uh, the the team that receive better will will win, of course, because they they are not such uh, uh, think like uh, I will win because I have the the better man. Uh, Perugia proved that, uh, and and now with uh, with the problems that financial problems that uh, Europe have because of the COVID, teams can afford to have all superstars. So I think, yeah, the, at the end of the season, we will compare the, the numbers and see that the better team that received uh, in the playoff, of course, uh, was, uh, let's say, the winner or at least making to the final. And, and yet for me, that's the the mark uh, on the question right there. Maybe we can go to the to the league matches and start with Modena Monza. Actually, we said a lot of things about both teams, but still Modena lost against Monza one three in the first in the first round, and that was the biggest surprise in the in the league uh, in the first round, I think. So Lagumgia, I. I think that he's the talent which will be. I don't know how. Uh, in uh, do we have this newcomer uh, award uh, in the end of the season, like in NBA or something? But but it's very possible that that that, that he could win win something like this. I believe. We could set it up. Yeah. So. Uh, okay. Maybe we can we can do it at least in our podcast. So, yeah. so we are going to have new newcomer of the season award at the end of the league plus MVP and I don't know we can also have this uh, um, voting in the end of the season for team of the team of the season MVP and newcomer of the, of the season uh, as an idea. Yeah, well, and yeah. back to the game, Modena Monza could have been uh, zero three as well because uh, Monza throughout the, the entire match made something like 35 mistakes and uh, the second set, the one Modena won, was 20, 25-23, if I don't remember wrong. And they were even, if not Monza, uh, leading to, to the end of, uh, uh, of the set. And Modena looked like a very disconnected team. Uh, poor attacking, get blocked 70 times by 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 Monza they were completely out of rhythm and oh, mm, how, how can I say and when you are playing that bad and on the other side uh, other than Lagumzia Sedlacek made a a good uh, very very good game and Alt Alt made nine attack out of ten was perfect on blocking so maybe one three was was much of a, of a not such a, a reliable witness of the of the, how the the game actually was. Maybe we should mention also that Lanza didn't play, so so he he will need some time to uh, to be included in the team. Yeah, because for the rules, uh, you can't play uh, until the the third game of the season uh, if uh -huh. you're not uh, in the list uh, at the end of the. Of the um... ah, so that's the reason I I didn't I didn't yeah. know this rule. Okay, okay. Next next one maybe Milano against Top Volley three zero. I don't think this is a surprise, but I believe that Top Volley would get more resistance against against Milano in this in this first match. Uh, from Bulgarian perspective, Georgi Seganov played uh, in this match as a setter instead of uh, the forty one years of age. Uh, Daniele Sotile, and uh, the biggest difference in this game was the efficiency of attack 
uh, of both uh, both teams the the efficiency of milano was 20 percent uh, around approximately better than the than the efficiency of uh, of top volley so so that was the biggest the biggest reason the, the the greatest reason for for milano to win and cisterna without sabi that was is yeah. to underline which is supposed to be their the best attacking player throughout the season yeah. even if the the guy who replaced him on well uh, played pretty well he played also pretty well in the cup round but it's different it's a different threat also for the middle blockers and the, the opposite team to to look one repetition of of the match for uh, for the cup ravenna against piacenza this time piacenza won 3-1 uh, but still, Russell is very weak in reception, and uh, this this team needs fixing these connections between between players. And I don't think we need we need to spend more time on this because because uh, we comment we commented on that that they need they need time. They are very good players, even even though we are a little bit aging with Antonov on the bench and uh, and James Shaw and. Uh, Whatever, uh, even uh, with Candelaro, Candelaro, yes, Candelaro also. So, yep. so maybe maybe the, the only young uh, younger player is Alberto Polo in the middle. Is, uh, in the middle. Oh, Clevenot is not so. Ah, yeah, yeah, Clevenot so also, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. And Scanferla, the libero, is yeah. also a young guy. Yeah. Trentino uh, so... Padova. Trentino Padova. I don't think we have to comment on Trentino performance because. After the semi-final of the Super Cup, Trentino has uh, slashing rivals. Uh, we we saw them at the Champions League preliminaries, and uh, now well, Padova, young, the youngest team I think, at the Super League, uh, uh, with with Nimir uh, making a record in serve. I think that's his high career in Italian league. Nine, no. No, well, he scored 10, ten last ten. time. Of yeah, course. I don't remember against. Well, but uh, with Milan, yeah. it's, it's not normal to to see a performance like that uh, every day. And well, uh, when we uh, thought that we should, uh, we'll have to wait to see another performance like that. Uh, comes the King Leon and make that uh, same number on the Vivo match 3-0. And well, I don't know if you guys want to comment on any of the two matches. Uh, I can I can say some words as I as I mentioned uh, to you yesterday. I believe in a three-zero match, you 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 would expect that there is a big difference in in attack efficiency and attack successfulness. It wasn't the case. The attack uh, successfulness of both teams were pretty 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 even, but part of them made a lot of mistakes. I believe. More than yeah. 30, 30 mistakes for uh, 30 errors for the whole match. So that was the difference, and of course the the surfer of Trentino in that in that regard too. So pretty pretty normal. We can say also that Lisinat still didn't play and Ukareli played, but uh, he's not in his uh, best shape for so so far. Definitely not. And uh, bo both games were pretty much similar because. Uh, Actually, they were closer than than it may look uh, on a on a three zero, because uh, both Perugia and Trento won two sets on the advantage. Perugia went 35-33, if I don't get wrong, in the, in the first set, and um, the experience, as uh, Ronnie pointed out, Padova is the youngest team on uh, on, on the Super Lega made a lot of difference when you get uh, the point uh, uh, over the twentieth. Uh, for example, in the last uh, in the last set, uh, um, Trento was, was trailing by one, 30, 33, 32, I think. Botolo, the young outside spiker, who played a very good game for uh, for Padova, would have scored with a very powerful spike, but he touched the net, so the point uh, went to Trento, and uh, they were able to turn uh, to turn the, the the end of the set and win 3-0. Um, but as, as Ronnie pointed out, when you got guys that serve nine aces, they could uh, overcome every difficulty they could find in attacking or or defending or, or blocking. Leon alone, Leon alone yesterday turned completely the 
the the first set of the game. Especially uh, in the third, especially in the third where we, where exactly. we were five five points uh, uh, below, so that was fantastic. Mm -hmm. That's actually what was we thinking about. We were trailing uh, 18-22, I think. And then he went serving to get four strike aces, uh, a couple of counter attack, and they, they, they basically... <laughs> the, the game ended there on <laughs> his serve. Honestly, I wasn't able to, to, to watch the match yesterday, but I'm not surprised anyway. <laughs> so it's, it's a typical thing that Perugia won against Vibo Valentia. 3-0. So. Let's remember something. If you guys want to uh, watch some some of the Italian league and you don't have, uh, I don't know, the, the money to buy the pay-per-view, you can show up and on the Cuba Inspired uh, Facebook page, uh, there, there will be some matches of the Italian league uh, completely free. So you guys can check uh, that. A little bit of advertising to my face so sorry for that yeah, of course <laughs> uh, of course that's with the description for cuban spike be, uh, below okay. in the yeah cuban spike link in the description below okay yeah. so and the last match verona lube well i think you you talked about that or yeah when you analyze the reception of uh, that this uh, john well not so john but no so uh, uh unexperienced team uh, that Verona have. Uh, I think Matei is uh, right now uh, on his final years of uh, his uh, great, great career that started on, on Bulgaria, then Dynamo Moscow, and then uh, that super and legendary, legendary team that Trentino had, and with Rado, of course. And it was, I think, a, a nostalgic match because. Uh, after after years, uh, you can see in the same court Juan Torena, of course, and Matei, and and Raldo Stoichev that make uh, make history at the beginning of the decade. So yes, uh, for for Verona, last la, like I say, it will be a long season. I think they will be in trouble if they don't uh, make that thing of the reception well. Uh, they could stand to relegation. I don't know why, what you think, guys. Uh, well, I, I think that they will not fight not to be relegated. I mean, even if they're starting pretty slow, and then I hope they get 0-5 uh, when it comes down to win and losses because next round of the league is Verona against Trento. Uh, I, I still think that Rado will find out a way to turn to turn things around. Actually, mm. in the second or the third set against Lube, Verona had a chance to to fight till till the end of the set, but they wasted a lot of free balls. And w when you don't uh, when you don't get the opportunity that a strong team such as such as Lube is giving you, you you end up you end up losing. But if Boyer gets some momentum. Uh, if uh, Jeski and Asparovo, Asparovo uh, will develop, I think that Verona will make the playoff at the end of the of the season. I, be I believe that if, if Verona if Verona plays like they play against Lube, they are not going to have uh, problems with uh, with that. They are not going to fight for for staying in the league. Uh, if Jeski can can stay healthy. You guys can <laughs> uh, can can know the the historial of of uh, injury that this player can, uh, have uh, in the past had in the past. Sorry, uh, especially with the USA national team that uh, well uh, took took him uh, a long time out of the court. So yes, uh, we we should uh, wish the best luck uh, for Verona and expect that in the next matches. No, not in the next one. I mean, okay. in the next one, in the next one <laughs> matches, they can uh, at, at least score uh, some some uh, Ws for that for that city. Uh, okay, maybe we can go to our lovely rubric volleyball lessons in Italian. Uh, okay, so we pick th three more words of the 
of the volleyball important ones to to translate it from English to, to Italian. And the first word is a setter, which is a palleggiatore in, in Italian. Then we have uh, the word, the translation of outside hitter, which is schiacciatore. And then middle blocker is centrale, literally the man who, who is in the, in the center, in the, in the middle of the, of, of the net. Okay, thanks. I'm I'm now uh, having a look in the in the program in the schedule of the of the league in order to maybe we can make our um, our next episode after the the fourth round because uh, from from the time we are recording this to to the next to the end of the fourth round there there are nine days ten days so so. We can we can have the next episode after the fourth round of the of the league and in the second round the matches will be Lube against Ravenna, Trentino against Verona. Very tough start from <laughs> for Verona with, with with two matches against the favorite, Monza against Milano, very interesting match too for me. Piacenza against Perugia could be again interesting. A Cisterna against Padova and Vibo Valentia against against Modena. And... Per, 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 Perugia against Piacenza with Bernardi meeting again yeah. with uh, <laughs> with his old, uh, with his they, old club. They, they like the, each other very, a lot. A lot, exactly. Yeah. Um, if if you have something to say more, I believe that uh, we uh, here is the time again to uh, to to. To, to, to tell our followers, uh, subscribers, uh, spectators, listeners, whatever, that they can uh, share this uh, this podcast, subscribe to our channels, follow our pages in Facebook with all the description in the description. And I would like also to uh, to thank the first two uh, patrons, patrons of uh, Volleyball Explained, uh, Teodosi uh, Tonchev and Atanas Kirachin for being so... Uh, so helpful to, uh, to to support us in in Patreon. So thank you for this too. And uh, if if you like our content, you can you can do it also in in Patreon. And we are going to put the link uh, uh, below. And uh, I believe this for now. We can uh, we can summarize that. Uh, I believe as as we put it as a as a title, it's pretty much possible that this is going to be a three horse race uh, in the Italian league this season between Lube, Perugia and Trentino for the for the title and uh, I hope that it's going to be a very interesting season. Uh, yes, uh, just to point out the this uh, the second round uh, we will show uh, three games in Cuba and Spike. Uh, it's important to the people know Civitanova and Ravenna, of course, uh, per, at the same time Perugia and Piacenza, also in 11 sports. And well, uh, Modena versus uh, Valencia, we will show uh, later, we will upload the game. So it will not lie, but if people uh, want to watch that game, uh, they, will, they, they can find it on Cuban Spikes Facebook page. I would also like to to greet our friend Nasko Karachanski from the fans of the of the Italian uh, volleyball championship Bulgarian Facebook Facebook page who is following all all events in Italy and uh, and uh, transmitting them in the page in order for Bulgarians also to have the possibility to uh, to follow them closely uh, not not only uh, with with our with our podcast and pages, but also in the in the Facebook uh, in his Facebook group too. So uh, thank you thank you for uh, for being uh, the the co producers and co commentators, uh, co analysts and co pundits. Like if you we use the British words, so so thank you and uh, dear spectators, um, watch us also the next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.